Today, we delve into the strategic evolution of Rolex, from its manufacturing nuances to its marketing finesse, positioning itself as a revered luxury brand in the watch industry. As Rolex enthusiasts eagerly await each development, the pricing dynamics of Rolex watches take center stage. In this video, presented by Capital Luxury, we navigate through the current state of the Rolex market. We believe that staying informed about the watch market is crucial, and our aim is to provide you with valuable knowledge. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time to ensure you receive updates on our upcoming videos. Rolex watches, hailed as masterpieces, symbolize craftsmanship, exceptional performance, and luxury. Their timeless designs are coveted worldwide, with rarity adding significant market value. The recent surge in market value, driven by limited supply, has elevated prices for secondary models in the pre-owned watch market. In this secondary market, prices are influenced by the delicate balance of supply and demand. Authorized Rolex retailers adhere to recommended retail prices, anchoring the luxury aspect. Luxury timepieces, beyond igniting passion, serve as stable investments. Success in building a luxury watch collection lies in patience, as returns on substantial capital investment may take several years. The current market, though reflecting past trends, shows positive signs. Speculators, who once inflated prices, are gradually fading away. The market is witnessing a decline in the value of certain models, bringing about the positive aspect of eliminating counterfeit dealers. Enthusiasts turned dealers are now navigating a changed landscape, focusing on integrity in selling watches. The challenge of acquiring sought-after Rolex models, such as the Date Just or Oyster Perpetual, is gradually easing. The market shift is restoring a sense of safety, reducing the excessive presence of dealers. This is good news for collectors who have long awaited their dream watches amidst the challenges posed by the grey market. The rich history of Rolexes, filled with remarkable achievements, adds to the allure. Understanding the intricacies of the brand is vital for daily wearers, emphasizing the importance of knowledge about different models and their collectible value. For newcomers, the advice is to focus on watches that have gradually gained recognition over time, steering away from excessive hype. Take, for instance, the Daytona 116520, a wise investment choice due to its consistent fame. The vintage market, though challenging, offers substantial rewards for those willing to invest time and knowledge. The market's recent shift has brought hope for a return to a more exclusive realm, catering specifically to genuine professionals and collectors. Now that we've explored the current state of the Rolex market, let's switch gears and dive into the fascinating world of Rolex terminology. So, you've saved up for your first Rolex, perhaps opting for a vintage piece. But wait, what's with all these peculiar terms like frogfoot, gelt, and tropical? It might sound like the ramblings of a tipsy cartoon character in an offbeat rendition of Alice in Wonderland. Fear not, we've got your back with a cheat sheet to unravel the mysteries. Rolex aficionados revel in this language. It's like a secret code signaling that you're part of the insider club, someone who cherishes horological intricacies as much as the next enthusiast. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it seems. We've compiled a cheat sheet to ensure you're on equal footing the next time you encounter a vintage watch dealer. Well, almost. At the very least, they'll know you're someone who cares enough to sweat the details. Two line, a dial with only two lines of text above the six o'clock marker, like certain ref. 14,060 submariners, offering a clean and uncluttered aesthetic. Four line, the dial with four lines of text, adding chronometer certification and depth rating, as seen on a ref. 14,060M Submariner. Bark finish, a texture found on certain President's bracelets resembling bark, adding a unique touch to the Rolex Day Date. Big Crown, 
early submariners with an oversized 8mm winding crown, including references 6200, 6538, and 5510 coronet. Their iconic Rolex crown logo, often referred to as the coronet, Cyclops, a watch crystal with a built-in magnifier for the date, first introduced in 1948 on a date just model. Double Swiss underline, a specific dial on the first Daytona ref, 6239 with an underline beneath Cosmograph and two Swiss signatures. Eagle Beak, crown guard style on certain ref, 5512 submariners with guards shaped like eagle's beaks. Explorer Dial, a dial featuring the Explorerized mix of dash, Arabic, and triangular mockers, found on certain earlier submariners. Feet First, a dial with depth rating in feet rather than meters, often associated with submariners destined for the American market. Frog Foot, a type of Rolex coronet found on certain sport watches, resembling the foot of a frog. Ghost Bezel, an aluminium bezel with faded coloring, creating a ghostly appearance. Glossy gilt dial, an early Rolex dial where the underlying brass dial blank is exposed, giving a golden hue to text and features. HEV, helium escape valve, featured on certain Rolex professional models like the Sea Dweller, allowing helium molecules to escape during decompression. Matte dial, a dial used on Rolex sport watches from the mid-late 1960s to mid-1980s, featuring a flat black surface with white text. Maxi dial, a dial with oversized loom plots for enhanced legibility. Mercedes hands, a unique Rolex handset with a minute hand resembling the Mercedes logo. Meters first, a dial with depth rating in meters before feet. Neat font. A dial style with more standardized and neater printing, found on certain rep. 5,512 subs. Oyster. A highly water-resistant case with a screw-down crown and case back. A hallmark of Rolex watches. PCG. Pointed crown guards. Crown guard style with pointed guards, found on ref. 5,512 subs from 1959 to 1963. Small crown. Refers to early subs with a smaller winding crown. Seen in references like 6,204, 6,205, 6,536 by one, and more. Spider dial. A glossy dial with lacquer coating cracks, resembling a spider web. Stellar dial. Brightly colored lacquer dial found on certain day-date watches from the 1970s. Swiss exclamation point dial. A dial with a circular loom plot forming an exclamation point. Seen in subs, explorers, and GMT masters in the late 1950s slash early 1960s. Super case. A submariner or GMT master two case with fatter legs and a larger bezel creating the impression of a larger watch. Tapestry dial. A dial featuring vertical ridges, found on five-digit date just from the late 1970s slash early 1980s. Tropical. A black dial turned brown due to paint degradation, highly desirable for its unique coloration. So, the next time you delve into the world of Rolex watches, You'll be armed with the knowledge to decipher the intricate language of collectors and enthusiasts alike. Whether you're eyeing a vintage piece or exploring the latest releases, understanding these terms adds a layer of appreciation to the timeless craftsmanship of Rolex. Stay informed, stay stylish, and until next time, happy collecting. Thank you for joining us today at Capital Luxury as we delved into the latest insights on the Rolex market and explored the intriguing world of Rolex terminology. We hope this information has provided valuable insights for both enthusiasts and those considering their first Rolex purchase. If you enjoyed this content and want to stay updated on the latest developments in the luxury market, make sure to subscribe to Capital Luxury. Stay informed. Stay ahead.
Your journey into the world of exquisite craftsmanship and timeless elegance continues with us.